What's up, what's up, what's up? This is your boy Cutie Content Guy, and I am back for a brand new episode of The Real Housewives of Patank. Season 7, episode 16, The Liars. Um, Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Tell a friend who knows a friend who knows a friend and tell a friend. Let me pull up my notes. Let me play some music in the background. What do I want to play? Play that. Give y'all a little, little background noise. Alrighty. Whenever my notes pull up, we can get started. Okay. So, like I said, did I do, did I do my intro? Yeah. Like, comment, and subscribe. Thank you for everybody who has subscribed. Thank you for everybody who has enjoyed my videos along with um, my review of the fashions. Um... Uh, we will be doing, me and Adrian will be doing weekend sessions probably Wednesday, I think. And then we'll do another one after the Grammys, maybe Monday or something. All right, let's get into this thing. So the show opens up with Roberto, Water, Ankles, and Ashley. And um, they down there playing at the bridal store. Um, You know, playing at, yes, we all know. Roberto and Juan have gotten married and moving on. Um, uh, she trying on dresses now. I will give her credit. I give old Roberto credit. I must say that the first dress um, was pretty. The, this was this what you see right now was not the first dress. I couldn't find it. But the first dress is pretty. This is the third dress. The second dress was ugly. And the third, this is the third dress, and it was okay too. Um, but yeah. Um, yeah. She's talking about how stressful it is to be um, you know, planning a wedding. And like this tweet says, girl, you act like you've never been married before. So she said, it's so hard to plan a wedding for two people. I mean, I gotta get the license, I gotta make people believe that we're actually married. Um, I have to get people to believe that we're actually in love. I have to get people to believe that I'm not his beard and he's not my beard. We have to get a cake, a venue, a pastor, and we had to convince Andy to let us film it. Um, so right after that, child, honey, as she do what she do best, child, she down there spilling the tea, girl. She is down there giving out the dirt. And she is talking about um, what Ashley was talking about, child. She was talking about um, oh, Wendy and um, Wendy and Mia. I couldn't think of the damn girl name. The liar, Bill the Puss. She was talking about her. Um, I promise y'all, I'll be forgetting stuff. She was talking about Bill the Puss, and they were talking about Wendy getting her coochie licked on and. And girl, I just can't imagine crater face licking. Let me see, let me let me go back to my notes, child. Um, Ashley, cause like I said, she couldn't wait, honey. She down there talking, and she was like, um, you know, Giselle, she, honey, she want the rundown, girl. Give me the rundown, give me the rundown. What happened, child? She said, honey, did somebody else do some vagina bumping? She heard that, um, it, Ashley and her. Her Ashley and Candace had kissed, but Ashley said no, it wasn't her and Candace. So maybe it was Wendy and, and Mia. Um, Giselle says she needs to pretty much talk to Mia before she does what she does best, go and run her mouth. Because you know, Giselle's in everybody's business but her own business. For seven seasons, she's been doing that. And the girls have been letting her get away with it. Well, everybody but Karen. Um she uh so Ashley leaves. They start talking about. Giselle says, "I'm there." Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Giselle starts talking to Robin about being at the being at the bridal store and how she's there. Ashley was there, but her mother wasn't there. So Robin's still playing in these dresses, right? She's still playing dress up, still trying to look like a woman. But your mother don't know you're there, girl. This is not your first time getting married. It's not a secret. You're not like getting married out of wedlock. Y'all was divorced, got married. Let your mama know that you're getting married to this man again. <sighs> um, 
Robin said she doesn't want Wendy or Karen at the party. She said Wendy was being fake and funny because Wendy was laughing at her, at her getting read by Karen. So I said, oh, okay, girl. Child, over at Candace's house, honey. Um, She's talking about the album release party, the video, excuse me, the album release party, the video release party and the album release cover or something like that. Chris asks, how was Mexico, Mexico? Um, <laughs> Candace says... <laughs> She said, child, old women were fighting. <laughs> um, and she said it was a mess. They bring, he says, um, oh, shit, what? oh, they start, okay, let me get it together. They start to talk about, she starts to explain to him what happened in Mexico. Now, at the same time, Karen and Wendy meet up for lunch, and they are also talking about what goes down in Mexico. And they're pretty much um, uh, Candace lets Chris know that Karen and Robin got into it. And Chris made a very good point. He goes, do y'all do anything else other than attack the husbands? So I was like, okay, sir, I agree with you on that part. Um, Karen says she's been sitting on this Juan thing for three years. You know, last week when Karen said Juan hugged her so tight that her breast touched her bird back. AKA she she was inappropriate and she felt, you know, violated, but she didn't say anything. Um, they bring up blue eyes. Karen says she's not addressing it because, of, you know, it's not, he doesn't exist. Now, what bothered me about Candace a little bit, and I'm going to get into Candace some more. Candace was like, I don't like that. She didn't like. She didn't like that Karen brought up Juan, and I was looking like, but you didn't. But you still. So you didn't like that Karen brought up Juan, but you hanging out with Giselle, who accused your husband of a me too. Okay. All right, Candace. I'm gonna get into you a little bit more later on now. Candace says, "Yeah, just like you know that old bit, that old Cookie Monster ass bitch in front of me. Um, you know, Wendy D." Wanda D, excuse me. It's just God. let me just move on because Candace girl, you're doing too much. Chris and Candace are getting ready to start IVF again. They're gonna start their process again, so hopefully it works out for them. Ashley FaceTimes Karen and uh and Wendy. Ashley shares that there's a group message about the bachelorette party. Um, however, Wendy and Karen are not invited. Wendy doesn't understand what's going on because her and Karen was all chummy chummy. Now there's a problem. Um, excuse me, her and Robin was all chummy chummy. Now there's a problem. She doesn't know what's going on. She's confused. She looked like she was kind of hurt in the face. But I was looking at Rob. I was looking at Wendy like, girl, you trying to be a pick me? And I, I mm -mm, nope, get somebody else to do it. I wouldn't want to hang out with them. I wouldn't want to hang out with them old late heifers. Okay, I wouldn't want to do it. Um. So, yeah, child. So, child, over at Build a Puss House, honey, Giselle comes over. Um, Giselle, why you? Giselle, your outfit was cute, but them heel, your feet were struggling in them heels, honey. Your, your feet like they was looking for some air. Your feet look swollen, and them got them heels look tight like you was pregnant. Y'all remember when Kim Kardashian was pregnant, and she was wearing them heels, and she took them heels off, and the imprint of the design of the heel was still in her foot? That's what Giselle looked like, and we know Giselle's not pregnant. Just saying. Um, child Mia showed her this house that she's renting that she no longer lives in, so she just spent all this money on a rental to redo a rental, to redesign a rental, not to put brand new furniture in a rental, to redo an entire rental home. Floors, everything. You're renting the home, sweetie. You're renting. Anyway. Um, she pretty much asked Mia if she ate Wendy Box. And I was like, well, hey, Giselle, get right to it. Ain't no point of waiting around. Um, Mia says that Wendy pretty much spread it wide, and what, what what Evelyn say? No, what Evelyn's father say? I mean, what uh, the Braxton's father lay it low and spread it wide? No, I'm sorry, Miss Evelyn said that, honey. You laid it low and spread it wide. Um, and she was spread eagle, and she saw it, and um, they pretty much showed each other their JJs and said it was cute and this and that. Wendy says that she that um, excuse me Mia says that Wendy is not jealous it was just sexual tension because Wendy really wants that cookie <sighs> um 
Oh, Mia said she touched her kit, her coochie, and said it was pretty. Her and Jacqueline are still not talking, and then Charlie start planning for the bachelor party. Child, wasting our time. So let me uh, let me just move on because I'm gonna get into that later on. Child over at Wendy's house, honey. Um, she's showing us what a professional looks like. She's doing her minty jobs while the girls just are mad at her. Um, she says she's not. She said Robin's not willing to meet her halfway. Then it, it is what it is. I'm like, girl, fuck Robin. You want to be friends with somebody who pretty much has had a has has antagonized, has carried on, who's been mad at you, who stepped to you like you're trying to fight, and who who's a lab dog to somebody. And the minute that Giselle says no, Robin stops. The minute Giselle says sit, Robin sits. But you want to be a friend with that person. You want to be a friend with somebody who really don't want to be a friend with you. Wendy, girl, I be trying to, Wendy, I be trying to go up for you. I really do. I do. I do. I do. Ooh, but you make it so difficult. Why do you want to be friends with them? Them, them, them damn girls don't want nothing to do with you. Fuck them hoes and keep it moving. Shit. Okay. Now that I got that in my system. Um, okay, so I'm getting ready to say to y'all, it's going to be a shocker. I did not get the picture, but it's going to be a shocker. Water ankles, Giselle water ankles, Brian actually look cute in her pink on her, no, her, her purple or lavender mini dress she had on. She looked very cute that entire little scene. So I thought, okay, that must've been the day she paid for somebody to come over to the house. Um, Ashley and, and Mia both show up in this see-through, um, this see-through, uh, leopard snakeskin outfit. I'm sorry, they get, they're getting on the party bus to go to Roberto's bachelor party. Um, honey, I gotta say, honey, Mia was wearing that outfit. I don't care for creative face, build a puss, but she's wearing that outfit, child. Ashley looked like she get ready to do some gymnastics. Like, she get ready to go and do a routine on the floor with the with the what's the what's the girls that won the olympics in uh 2012 or whatever 16 whatever that's what ashley like she get ready she's preparing for the 2024 tokyo olympics because ashley <sighs> ashley body is so muscular that it's really hard for her to put something cute on she be trying now so i give it to her. at least she try um anyway um, so everybody starts to show up, child. Um, Candace looked cute. Like I said, Giselle looked cute. Child. Sleepy C showed up. Child looking like somebody chaperone. She had the same wig on that Whoopi had on back in the day. Um, just. I was watching Watch, watch What Happens Live a few minutes ago. <clears throat> And April Ryan was on there. And she was talking about how she's friends with, you know, Giselle and all the girls and stuff like that. Because she's from Baltimore also. And then she says that Sharice and her went to college together. And Sharice used to put on fashion shows. And Sharice was the fashion girl. Sharice was the fashion girl. Just because you don't have money doesn't mean that you can't dress. Sharice is one of the worst dressers on t- reality TV. Simple as that. I think she even got Dr. Simone because y'all know Dr. Simone, my girl, but Dr. Simone cannot dress. She got Giselle beat. I don't care what y'all say. She looks a fool. Oh, and don't you worry, the Sharice Reed is coming. Don't you worry. So, like I said, honey, Sharice showed up looking like somebody goddamn chaperone. Robin showed up in this cute little dress. Child, Sharice is mad because she didn't throw the party. I'm like, girl, don't nobody want no goddamn grandma party. Y'all sitting around having tea, 
trying to help Sharice do her taxes. Don't nobody have time for, don't nobody want to do that. Mm -mm. We want to go to the party. We want to see some coochie. We want to see some titties. We want to see some ass. We want some wings. Yeah, we want to have a good time. We don't want to be bored. Um, child over at Karen's, honey. Karen let the girls know she get into the coin. She said, honey, I ain't worried about going to no, no party. Honey. I'm writing a check, honey. A Trump check. Well, what's your status at the bank? I remember when Nene said that, baby. That, that was good to me. Um, so yeah, that happened, whatever. Blah, blah. Okay. Okay. So we're on the bus, right? They're on the bus. The bus is uh um Reese Pooh, Water Ankles, Roberto, Ashley, Candace, Bill the Puss, and some extras that they done found somewhere. This is my problem with Candace. Candace, you have not bothered me all season, right? Which I'm very happy about. You've you found a new leaf. You've calmed down some. I'm cool with it. You've matured. And I'm really happy for your success with your music and stuff like that. But here's my issue with you, sweetie. You are trying, just like Wendy, you are trying so hard to be friends with these ladies. You are sitting on the bus with Giselle, the same person who is making up lies about your husband. Let me repeat myself. The same person who's making up lies about your husband and Roberto joining in catching attitudes with you and Mia who threw a drink on your friend, right? Your friend. But you want to be with these girls so bad. Oh, and Ashley, that you seem to have a problem that you really don't have no problem with, but you just have a problem with her on camera. I don't get it. There, you, Giselle couldn't sit with me until that bitch apologized to me. It's simple as that. You done lied about my motherfucking man. You done said he did, he was with you inappropriately, inappropriately. Then you added some, you know, you added some spices to it. You spiced it up and you went on with it. And that was your storyline. Ho, you couldn't say shit to me. You couldn't say, if you ain't apologizing, we ain't doing nothing together until you apologize. Until then, I will read you every time I see you. It's simple as that. So, Candace, from, so Candace, for that reason, I ain't got nothing for you. And then on Watch What Happens Live, I guess apparently, you know, you, you beefing with Giselle again. Girl, stop. Stop. Stop it. So, Candace is on the bus running her mouth about what happened in Mexico. And like I said, honey, the same, the, you, you, you chilling with the same girl that you know, talking shit about your husband. Got it. We learned that Wendy tried to kiss Mia and Mia shut it down. Mia, Mia, Mia girl, shut up. Mia, what, girl, girl, Mia, stop. Mia, girl, Mia, just lie. Child, Mia getting paid to lie. Mm, it must be good. Sign me up, because maybe I can come up with some stories. She's getting paid to lie. So anyway, we go inside the strip club, honey. We see a stripper. I hope I can show this without getting in trouble. So, child, we see a stripper, honey. And Roberto sees a stripper, honey. They lock eyes. Roberto walks over and whispers sweets nothing. She goes, hello. Can I get your number? I want to take you home. Honey, Giselle going to let Roberto have a good time because it's her bachelorette party. Let me take this down just in case I get in trouble like you do. Um, so you know, they lock eyes, honey. Roberto said, Child, I don't mind no titties and ass in my face. Yes, we know, sir. Most men don't, most muscular football player men don't. They don't mind titties and ass. I don't even mind titties and ass in my face. There ain't nothing I'm gonna do with it, but I don't even mind it. So, yes, sir, we know you don't mind titties and ass in your face, Roberto. We know. Um, who's texting me? Um, where I leave, leave all that? So, honey, Cherie's drunk ass, drunk auntie looking ass, cock eye looking ass. She drunk. She want to know what's going on with Michael and Ashley. Ashley says they good. They've been trying to create a good environment. Um, honey, <laughs> child, Candace said, honey. If I had a chance to leave Gwilym and take half his money, bitch, bye. Hello? <laughs> uh, what? Oh, take half his money and get child support for the next 18 years? 
for them grown ass babies she got child Ugh. I would give a fuck what Michael was doing or who he was doing it with hello <laughs> run my coin thank you I done my part moving on um so Ashley girl Ashley I hope you're just playing the game with us because you were trying to get that house that seemed like you got next seat, next episode so hopefully that's all that was about um Uh, she was talking about dating and she stopped dating this and that so Candace says well I just saw him in a, in, in a restaurant with another bitch and um, Ashley was like what? I don't know why he just can't be honest to this and that I'm like girl what you mad for let him do what the fuck he want to do if y'all not getting back together let him do what he lost he write that check and they clear do what the fuck you want to do because Michael got a nasty coin he got a nasty coin and I would get half that nasty coin and I would have half his nasty coin Plus my Bravo coin. Hello. Uh, okay. Um. So anyway, child. Moving on. So. Karen. Oh, so Roberto brings up um the text messages or whatever about Karen and asks Sharice how she feels about her. So here goes Sleepy C, talking about some. Uh, I don't think about Karen. And then the next breath, let me tell you about Karen. So here's, so when everybody's saying like, they don't understand why Karen is the way she is to Sharice, the ones who are crazy and don't pay attention to the show. Sharice has come back to the show, right? Okay, cool. You start, you help, you help get this group together seven years ago. You help get this group together. You back on the show. You have not showed us anything about your life. You have not interacted with any other girls outside of, Wore the ankles in Roberto, and every chance you get, you talk about your old ass keeps talking about Karen's old ass. That's why you're a friend of the show because you didn't show anything about your life. You bring nothing. Nobody's interested in anything you have to say. We don't want you back. We good on you, Sleepy C. Go home, get some sleep, correct them eyes, correct them fashions with them Jessica Simpson heels you had on. Jessica Simpson ain't wearing them heels since 2004. Them JCP penny collection outfits that you be wearing. We are good on you, sir. We don't need anything from you with your broad shoulders and your football built player looking ass. We are good. You bring nothing to the show. I don't give a damn if you started the show seven years ago, eight years ago, nine years ago. You're not doing anything now. You're not the queen of anything except for looking a fool. So she proceeds to say, I don't think about Karen and then starts saying all this stuff about Karen. I knew Karen back in the day. All she does is lie. I'd never air her stuff out, but she assassinated my character. When this girl gets drunk, you know, she sucks every dick available. The last time I was in the club with her, she was fucking the help and she was doing this and she was doing that. She disappeared and she was doing this and doing that. So then Candace says, well, when was this go? When was this? She, Sharice going to say, oh, this was some years ago. <laughs> what need me tell you girls? Don't talk about my past. Talk about what's going on right now. We ain't talk about the past. Talk about what's going on right now. Don't nobody care what Karen did seven or eight fucking years ago. What is she doing now that's affecting you? nothing minding her business you're mad because she took your spot because you couldn't do what you needed to do to stay on the show i don't give a damn if she left the show because she wouldn't do this or wouldn't do that you didn't stay on the show so we are not interested in anything you have to say and the only thing you got to say is oh well karen um she uh she slept with somebody years ago girl shut the fuck up Anything. Anyway, child. He go, Giselle. Yeah, I knew it too. Um, and all that all the time she was lying on me. I just didn't say nothing. Giselle, you admit that you lie. So you're a liar. Okay, so everybody at the table lying. You're a known liar. You, you lie. That's what you do for fun. You lie. Girl, I can't. I can't with these girls. They said Karen got her license taken away. So so pretty much the whole conversation was the whole bachelorette party was about Karen until the end when they started getting up and dancing. Um, um, but you know, she's drunk and she's she's a drunk and she's this and she's that. Girl, sleepy C, don't come back. We good. 
we don't need you back. I'm not interested in anything you have to say at the reunion. I don't give a fuck. I'm always going to read you. It, it is what it is. You don't like me reading Sharice? Don't come on my page. Simple as that. I'm always going to read Sharice. I'm always going to read Sleepy Seat. I'm always going to read The Pit Bull in an old grandma dress. I'm always going to read J.C. Penny. Okay? Simple as that. Y'all said at this bachelor party and the, the topic of the conversation was Karen. Everything was Karen. Robin, this was your opportunity to make the... You had a whole episode wrapped around you and you chose to talk about Karen. That's why you're a failure. Anyway, that's the end of my review. Like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll check y'all out next week. Peace.